Hi Aries, it's Elle here to do uh, a quick reading for you. So what we're going to talk about is love and money. All right, so let's get into it. Thank you, God, for blessing Aries with a clear, concise message from you. Aries, these three cards want to pop out. We're going to talk about money first. Eight of Pentacles, Eight of Pentacles, Nine of Swords, Ten of Pentacles. There might have been some worry about money, but it says you're secure or, or you're stability is secure okay your stability is secured because of the work that you continue to do you did something around the clock wash rinse repeat over and over again you were prudent with your money how you spent your money where you went or this is what you need to do um you also just um things are secured here for you okay you don't have to worry about not having uh you have a strong foundation or you have money saved up or maybe you um, you just did something over and over around the clock. Nine of Swords, there's a lot of fear, fear-based thoughts that something was going to fall apart or yeah, it was going to fall apart, it was going to end, the money was going to end, but it kept coming in, uh, it kept being consistent because you were consistent. You have no major here. So it's all about you and what you were doing in terms of your money. Some of you travel for work or you travel over the road for work. Some of you just kept showing up for something, even when it was rocky or foggy or you kept giving something a chance. You kept, you know, continuing it, uh, maybe even learning something new with the Eight of Pentacles. This could be self-taught also. Um, the Ten of Pentacles. So uh, this is, you know, of course, this is where everybody wants to get. There was a, a, a time where you were frustrated. You didn't know you were kind of foggy about you were worried if things were going to fall apart. Maybe you had some money struggles or you had some struggle that came into your life. Um, something uprooted you or it upset you or upset your money flow. Um, but it says that, you know, maybe there was a masculine energy that came in and also provided rescue or opportunity or good advice. Or it was just that you had, um, you know, you had um, a lot of money saved up or you had done well for yourself. Something about it ending. The ending is that you come to a place of financial stability, the transference of wealth. Also, because you went and you gained that knowledge, therefore you get wealth. In order to get wealth, you got to have the knowledge first. So you got to have the knowledge, the know-how too, right? Um, so yeah, you went and got some knowledge about something or about how to do or act with money or invest or save or where to put your money or, um, yeah. Okay, and Seven of Swords, you were keeping to yourself also. You had a plan or you wrote out a plan. Let's talk about a plan, um, maybe even planning for the future or you went it alone, the lone wolf, or you may have even been stolen from in business or in a relationship or being taken from or being taken for a ride or being lied to in terms of a relationship and money. Um, you may have been hiding money, storing up money also. Um, the nine and the seven of swords. So this is more so like mental, mental. Uh, it was playing a trick on you in regards to maybe you not being independent. You um, have seeing your stability only aligned with or coupled or in a couple or in a relationship. But with the eight of pentacles, it's something that you did solo. The Nine of Swords, it was to the Ten of Pentacles. Somebody could have come in and helped you help the Nine of Swords energy dissipate, go away. The worries, the fear go away. And it could have been a masculine energy that maybe loaned you something. Let's see what's going on here. Um, and money for Aries. Seven of Pentacles. So maybe somebody that, something that you did, work that you had done before, and it paid off or there's a return here. This could have been investment, stocks, bonds. I don't know. A big wish though, star card. Um, something that you, you've done online or that you have an audience or this is like crowdfunding also. This is um, fashion, beauty. Um, this is solidifying your name or your, your staple or being a staple in 
whatever it is, you got a lot of pentacles here. So it was something that you were doing for a very long time. And now there's solidification. Um, it, you got to a place of fear. This might have been around, I'm, I'm picking up the beginning of COVID or something like that. If you had your own business or businesses were shut down or there was a temporary uh, a pause, a stop in, in your money. Um, there was an abrupt ending. There was you being blindsided. Somebody was expecting you not to be able to cope with this change, but it looks like you got through it because of the things that you had done in the past, the work that you had put out in the past, the investments that you made in the past. You persevered, you healed, and now you're on the upswing or the uptick of recovery. So that means you're going to get all that you lost back or you're going to get more or you're coming out on the end of having to buckle down. Now you can be a little um, open with your money. Let's see what is going on here for love. It looks like career finance, you are solidified. You know, things are good. Um, let's see. Love, what's happening for love for Aries? Okay, so the chariot, not the best card for love. You're more so focused on yourself. You could be dealing with someone who's in a uniform, police, uh, military, somebody who wears a uniform, someone who has a lot of power, who keeps control, you know, over their emotions and their thoughts. Someone who wants victory or power over or power in a relationship. They may want power over you. This is a possessive nature also. This is somebody who wants something from you, but they want to give very little, little to nothing. They're storing of energy. They're taking it with them. This is somebody who has achievement because they keep everything to themselves or they know how to govern themselves. Let's see. Um, the five of wands. This is a love affair that maybe you were engaged in. So this was without you know, the status, like we're not boyfriend and girlfriend, or we're not fiance or whatever. This could have been a love affair where there's a lot of childish behavior. There's a lot of, um, yeah, childlike behavior, a lot of playfulness. Somebody played with your heart or they had a lot of other people that they were dealing with. This is somebody who wants someone to fight for them or fight for their affection or their time or, yeah, fight for me. Yeah, the three of, uh, cups so yeah this was like definitely like um somebody who had more than one person it could be you it could be another person it could be your person um this is an energy where it's like i want what i want i'm a i'm a lot selfish i, I want you but i want you to fight for me and run after me and chase me and keep i want to keep up this game or games um i'm going to come to you in a very sexual, playful, you know, way, um, frisky also. And, um, you know, that's what I want from you. And I'm not only doing that with you, I'm doing it with other people or another person. Um, I always wanna be having reunion with you. So that means that this person leaves for an extended amount of time and they come back and they expect for things to be the same or you to be the same. They don't want you to change. Yeah, they wanted uh, maybe a friends with benefits, um, no strings attached type of connection with you with the full card coming out. They like the connection, they like the sex, they like that you're, you know, you're fun, you're beautiful, you're fabulous, all of those things, but they don't want to tie themselves to any one person. This is somebody who wanted to make rounds all right, so, um, yep, Seven of Cups at the bottom of the day. This is somebody who created or cast illusions also, like maybe you, you're the only one, or when they're with you, they treated you like you're the only one. Um, but it was always an energy of having to reconcile. Like you guys can take three weeks off and they come back and act as if they saw you yesterday. It was always a new beginning, a new start. This is promiscuity at its best. This was somebody we just have more than one person, but they didn't want to, you know, garner any attachment or gain an attachment to you. So they put distance, time, space between the two of you. This is more so space because I feel like they would talk to you or text you or whatever, you know, while they're taking their break. But there was space between the two of you. Let's see. 
advice, trust, trust the universe. Um, I think of the nine of swords here and money. You just have a hard time trusting, trusting that the universe has your back because it's a big old fat yes for you. And let's clarify our yes answer. Um, let's see, what is the yes answer for Aries? What is this yes? It's a definite yes because it's the one with the exclamation point. There are two yes in this deck. Whoa, high honor. You're going to be recognized publicly. you coming up in the world, baby. For the work that you've done already, you know, this reducing to a seven. The work you've already done. The work you've already put in. Um, you could even get promotion. Yeah, in the distant horizons. So it's close to this card. So it's going to happen for you. It's not going to be far off. Whatever your dreams, your hopes, your wishes are, especially with the star card and this card coming out, you're going to fulfill them, okay? Or they will be fulfilled, all right? That's what I have for you, Aries. If it resonates, let me know how it resonates for you. Down in the comment section, go over to the website, book your own reading there. Ask a question or two by texting it to the number below. Catch me live every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday night, 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can also go to the website, use the discount code 40OFF to receive 40% off your reading. Take care. Many blessings.